Hello again. Not sure how many are still interested in this event with the backlash it received, but I did want to update at least the Fireball build for AOZ. As announced since last month, my time in December for games is a bit limited, though I will be back in full force in Season 3 of Diablo. Sorry if I disappoint in any way, I tried make a bit of time for this event too, but for me, it left a bad taste and I do not want to be part of it or give importance to it. I have explained a bit in my previous video the tier 10 chain lightning finish after only three hours since the event started, I could see this event has so many issues. Not only the 300 hours grind needed to level the glyph to just 50 is a nice idea, but very poorly implemented. It started with a lot of bugs and exploits, and also it runs in a completely unbalanced environment. The event is also more about pushing yourself than push a build. Such a thing is interesting in a balanced environment that has also less random factor. So player skill and determination could make a difference in high tiers as you need to be tactical about how to approach boss fights or group density. Balance this game. Fix the damage reductions. Tool tips actually be accurate and remove the damn shrines then this event can be very interesting in Season 3. For me, Season 2 overall was a nice experience till this event, better than previous one. So, if they put more effort in game balance, I am eagerly waiting for Season 3. Of course, for best performance in this event, you have to play Ball Lightning, because that's how much effort they put in game balance. I personally don't like to be told what to play in a game, hence another reason of my reaction to event. If you want to push yourself in event, you need to jump on Ball Lightning, but if you still want to play for fun Fireball, it is very viable in early tiers farms. Also, my previous builds Blizzard or Charge Bolts can do just fine in their limits. If you want to push with them, you do need to level up the new glyph. Also, you have absolutely no issue surviving on map, even in higher tiers. But on some randomness of Bloodseeker's affixes, you will struggle to survive in high tiers, so then you will be dependent on shrines and keep one shrine for boss fights. In high tier this event right now on Sorceress, it forces you to play with Uber, Unique Salig, or Damage Reduction from Injured and Full-Time Barrier. That is because either many Damage Reduction do not work while have Barrier, or some Bloodseekers are just doing 10 times more damage than any Elite on map. You can fight and hold 10 Elites at once in Tier 11, but die one shot suddenly to a Bloodseeker. Something is wrong, and I am not better testing more this game in conditions where they had no clue people were speed-filling the dungeon bar with spamming hydras or other summons and just fighting final bosses, or that you could swap key passives in dungeon and keep the benefits of Mage Lord Aspect. That fact alone tells me they do not test much in this game. Anyway, speaking of beta, I have been invited to participate in Ubisoft New Game Skull and Bones Close Beta, and yes, I will happily accept that invitation, and I will post on my channel this month few content from its beta. It looks like an interesting game and will be released next year in February, but I refuse to be a beta tester for this event in Diablo. I do not believe I will have time to also update my other seasonal builds for AOZ. All of them can easily do early tiers, with Ball Lightning sure being able push far, but you will be forced in high tiers to play the unique Uber Salig or Damage Reduction from Injured Synergy to survive some of the Bloodseekers. Following in the video, you will see all Skill Tree and Paragon Board, but there is also a planner in description of video. Thank you for watching and happy holidays.